So a 3DTrainer.com member asked the question, how do I spawn an actor randomly throughout my scene? So let's go ahead and set that up. It's actually quite simple. What we need to do is create one actor that spawns another actor. And you can see so far that I just have two actors here inside my project. The grassy background and this flower that we want to spawn randomly throughout the scene. So we can create an empty actor to be the spawning actor. So I'll click the little plus sign and I will call this actor spawn and I'm going to double click on the spawn actor and click on my behaviors tab and we want to scroll down to the behavior that says spawn actor and if we drag this in here the actor that we want to spawn is the flower actor you can see that we can choose whether we want to spawn the grass actor spawn itself or spawn the flower so it's already set to what we want to spawn now, what this member is asking is how do we get this flower to spawn randomly throughout the scene? Because if I were to just take this spawn actor and drop it down in here and press play, or preview I should say, then you can see that that flower automatically and instantaneously spawns on top of this white actor that we already created. So we want this to basically spawn every second in a different location on the screen. So let's go ahead and delete this spawn actor. We can see that it's working fine, but it's not really doing anything exciting so far. And we want to double click on spawn again. And we want to set up a timer for this. So I'll drag a timer in here. And we want to say every one second, and we'll click run to completion, we want to spawn a flower actor. So again, if I were to drag the spawn actor into my scene, and hit preview, it's going to spawn every one second that flower, but every other second it's going to spawn another flower on top of that flower, and again and again and again. We're not actually seeing that because each flower is exactly on top of the other one. So what we want to do is spawn this randomly all around the scene. Now when you're working with something like an iPad, the dimensions of the iPad are 1024 pixels by 768 pixels tall. So 1024 across and 768 tall. So what we want to do is plug in those values into our spawn actor here. So I'll again double click on the spawn actor. And you can see that we have a position. Right now this position is set to 0, 0 relative to the actor. Let's see what happens if I do 0, 0 relative to the scene. I'm going to hit preview. And after a second you can see down here at the bottom our actor showed up or the flower was spawned at zero zero and every one second this actor is going to spawn the flower down here at the zero zero coordinates because this would be the zero point for our height and our zero point for our width of our iPad dimension. So what we want to do is plug in a random expression for both the X position and the Y position for this. So we're going to click on this small icon here, the letter E, to open up the expression editor. And what we're going to do is click on this pull down and choose random. And you can see this random expression is already written in for us by simply choosing random. And we have a random minimum and maximum. And what we want to do is plug in the minimum and maximum. So because we're working with the x-axis, which as I mentioned earlier is 1024 pixels long, it means that the minimum can be 0, which would be that bottom left corner, and the maximum can be 1024. And then I'm just going to click this check mark to close that down and we have that expression set. So now we want to work with the Y coordinate. Again, as I mentioned, the height of the iPad is 768. So the minimum for this, if we go back to this random, would be 0. And the maximum would be 768. And again, click the check mark. Now, Again, it's important to note that I set this relative to the scene so that these values are exactly what I want them to be. It's a lot easier to understand things relative to the scene other than relative to the actor. So let's see what happens every one second. We should get a flower spawning in a random location in X between 0 and 1024 and Y between 0 and 768. So we'll go ahead and click Preview. 
And there we go. Every one second we have a flower showing up in a random location within that range of 0 to 1024 and 0 to 768. The only last thing that we need to do is get rid of this ugly white actor that we have here. Now, we can't actually remove it from the scene because it's what's spawning our flower, and if we were to remove it, the flower wouldn't spawn anymore. So what we can do is double-click on the spawn actor, and we can go into the graphics, and when you open that up, you can see that there is an um, option here called visibility, which is currently checked. If I uncheck that and then I preview, you can see that that actor, that spawn actor, is now invisible. It's still in the scene because it's actually spawning all these flowers, but we can't see it anymore. Now one other quick tip, because that's really all there is to this tutorial, is if you don't want to put a whole bunch of invisible actors into your scene, because you can see I still have this spawn actor floating around here, you can use some of your props. For instance, anything that you add to the scene is an actor. So let's not forget that this, that this big background image here is an actor itself. And I can use it to basically hide different behaviors and attributes that I want to use to control the scene. So I'm going to select this spawn actor. And I'm going to delete it. So now I would get no flowers spawning in my scene. I'm going to double click on the spawn actor over here in the actor bin. I will select this timer that I created. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to double click on the grass and I'm going to paste that in. So now I can just delete this spawn actor and I've cleaned up my scene quite a bit. Now obviously when you're doing something so simple you don't need to really worry about how many actors you have and how many rules you set up. But often, if my background isn't doing anything, I like to hide rules in my background that will go ahead and uh, produce the results that I need in my scene. So now I only have two actors. Hit Preview, and you'll notice that our background actor is also spawning the flower just the way we want it to. So that's it. And again, if you are a 3DTrainer.com member, don't forget that you can send us, email us your questions, or live chat with us, or Skype with us, and ask us any questions you want, whether it be related to 3D animation, computer modeling, or game design here in Game Salad. Feel free to ask us. We'll create a response and make sure that we share it with the rest of our members here at 3D Trainer. Thanks.